appreciate you sharing with us this morning. How terrific to have you here. Well, we're going to talk about how to pray today, and next week we're going to talk about how not to pray. And as you're going to see in the scripture, Jesus doesn't give us a lot of instruction on how to pray. He does talk to us about what to focus on in our prayers, and he talked to us in the Lord's Prayer about six primary areas in which we focus when we pray, and over the coming weeks we're going to break down each one of those six. But for the actual process of prayer, he doesn't give us a lot of instruction, although he does give us instruction how not to pray. And So that's what we're going to focus on today, and I want to run through some ideas pretty quickly this morning that may be of helpful to you, to you in triggering how to build a pattern of prayer in your life that's <coughs> going to be more significant than what's going on with you now. So, you know, as I mentioned the other day, religion has a lot of rules for prayer. Prayer, You know, uh, the, you, about how you can do it, when you can do it, how you do it, how you stand, how you sit, how you kneel, how you close your eyes, how you fold your hands, what you do. But Jesus doesn't have those rules. Those are all religion rules for prayer. And it's not required, as I said the other day, for you to be at some level of piety before you can pray. Remember the thief on the cross who knew absolutely nothing. He'd never heard of Jesus. He'd never read a Bible. He'd never been to a church. He'd never done anything spiritual in his life. He could pray on the cross, in fact, the prayer that brought him into eternal life. You don't have to wait until you're ready to pray. You can pray wherever you are in your spiritual journey right now. And then I want to encourage you that prayer doesn't require some specific habit or pattern. I told you I tried the early morning thing. I don't know if any of you tried it. I tried it again the other day. It didn't do any good. I cannot do the early morning thing. It just doesn't work for me. You've got to find a way and a pattern that works for you. And that's what I want to suggest to you this morning are 11 patterns that may be of help to you in looking for new ways to pray that make prayer part of this conversation. And all 11 of these have built into them ways to hear from God. Because if we just say, well, we're going to take 15 minutes and pray, and then we're done with it, you never give space for God to speak into you. So these ideas are more of an ongoing dialogue with prayer throughout the day that give opportunity for God to speak back into you because this is a two-way conversation. Now these suggestions are very practical. They're things that I've used or I know others who've used. They're uh, uh, tools um, for how to pray. And, and don't take all 11 of them. You won't be able to do them. So as I talk through these, pick two or three, maybe four, that might work for you. Try them. And if you didn't like the ones you picked, pick a couple others and try those and experiment until you find a way that fits with your communication pattern with God that makes prayer more of a natural, ongoing conversation with the Holy God who loves you more than anybody in the world. So don't stop whatever you're doing in prayer. What, if you've got a pattern now where you pray, don't stop that. It's okay. Stay with that. But these are some things you may add to it. And a little spoiler alert from the picture here. One of the 11 is not folding your hands and is not closing your eyes. That is not required for prayer. You can do that. It's helpful to do it at times, but it is not required for prayer. Prayer is a convert. Think of it as a conversation with your very best friend in the world. And you wouldn't only do that in the times you could be alone, sit down, close your eyes, fold your hands, and have this focused moment. That's not how this works in the way that builds a deeper relationship with God. So we're going to start to run through these. And again, we're going to go a little bit quick because there are 11 of them, but hopefully they'll trigger some ideas in your mind. The first is pray music. Pray music. Now, I know you got a prayer, uh, you got a playlist on your phone. You got probably several playlists on your phone. I got a bunch of different playlists on my phone, depending on my mood, depending on what I'm interested in. Uh, I'm sure you don't like any of my music, and I don't like any of your music. So it works out pretty good for both of us. But, uh, you know, I've got my music that I like when I play golf as a background. I've got my music that I like of the blues, which is, is probably a, a favorite genre of mine. I've got the 70s music. You know, my generation had the best music. I'm sorry, but we had the best music. We had the Beatles. We had other kinds of good groups that you didn't have. We had great music. So I, I like some of that. It brings back a lot of good memories. But I also have 
uh, playlists that are focused on prayer. And they're songs that trigger emotions, they trigger ideas, they trigger experiences, they bring me into an option to pray those songs to God. And, and praying music, especially for those who listen to music a lot, is a great way to begin to expand this dialogue with, with the Lord. I've got a couple of lists that are just really for special moments. I, I've got one uh, uh, playlist, and it's only the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. And sometimes when I feel like the world is just coming at me so much, and there's so much going on, and I'm getting pulled all different directions, which often happens in my job, I just put that on, and I pray it over and over. Turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. To me, that's helpful. That may not be a song that resonates with you one bit, and that's fine. Find music that fits for you and builds into your prayer life. Second option is to pray scripture. And praying scripture is really an important tool to use in order to strengthen your walk with the Lord. Pray with your Bible. And I like what Will said about a a physical Bible. I'm I'm finding that same thing's true because the ding of the phone or the ding of the computer pulls me away. So I'm I'm more and more back to my physical Bible. Uh, But pray scriptures. Let me show you how this works real simply. Most probably most familiar passage of scripture in the Bible, John 3.16. You all know it. For this, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his only, his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Critical, important scripture of the Bible. Let's pray that personally. For this is how God loved me, that he gave me his only son, that if I believe in him, I won't perish but I'll have eternal life. When I can pray that scripture personally, it begins to take on a new relationship with God. Or pray that for somebody else, substitute somebody else's name in there. Pick out scriptures that are meaningful to you, significant. You pick longer passages, obviously you have time, and pray those in a personal kind of way. It's a great way to deepen your communication with God. Thirdly, I suggest to you, pray while moving. Pray while moving. Um, um, You know, I I pray when I'm walking. And if I'm walking by myself, I'm just talking to the Lord. Kind of like you'd have a conversation. If somebody's walking along with you, they're coming to chapel, and and they're walking along with you, you'd just be chatting about stuff. And if you're walking by yourself, just talk to the Lord in the same way. Talk to him about whatever's going on. And uh, so I like to pray when I'm moving. It gives me moments to pray because there are times I'm walking across campus or I'm headed into the grocery store or whatever it may be. And when I'm moving, it triggers me to remember to pray. Another time I pray when I'm moving is when I'm driving. Not, not obviously in a scary place. I'll tell you one place I do drive, and it's closed right now, but Riverside Drive down here, which is being redone, it used to be the bumpiest road in all of Jackson, well, in all of America. It, you had to go so slow because the road was so bumpy. And I used to call it my prayer road because I had to go slow, and so when I'd get on Riverside Drive, I'd start to pray. And as I was always coming to campus, so I'd be praying for you, and sometimes by name, because it gave me a focus to pray. So find times when you're moving. Those are great times during the day to just pray. Build prayer into that process of when you're moving, either walking or driving or riding your bike or whatever it may be. Uh, a, th- a fourth one is pray posts. Pray posts of whatever social media it is you're on. And uh, it can be a great way. I, I, I loved what Will said today. That, I'm going to go back and hear that one over and over again. That was some really insightful, helpful stuff. Uh, that was really good. But, um, but, you know, we are all, all on social media, and I'm as addicted to it as you are. And, uh, and how to, to get the most out of that is to find places to pray some of those social media posts. 
It's part of how we communicate now. It's part of how we, we just connect with the world and how we talk to each other. Well, let's use it to talk to God in the same way. Now, lots of it, as Will mentioned, is destructive, like really big-time destructive and very divisive and very attacking, and, and it's, it's horrible stuff. It somewhat shows us a contrast to the Christian life. But when I'm praying, praying posts, I'm not looking for slogans. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for insights that help me to think more deeply about God and give me topics about which I need to pray. So let me give you an example, because I clip these. And I clip them as I see them, and I kind of put them in one folder, and then I periodically go through the folder. But Tim Keller, somebody I follow, Tim Keller, the pastor in, in New York City, and, and he put this in one post. He said, if Jesus didn't complain when he received a life infinitely worse than he deserved, why should we complain when we all get a life infinitely better than we deserve? There's a lot of good stuff to pray about there. A lot of good stuff to check spirit there. I think praying some of these posts of others can be really helpful. Here's another one I clipped. It's hard to hear God's voice when you've already decided what you want him to say. You're not going to hear God if you just sit praying, God, I expect you to say this, this is what it's going to be. You're just going to jerry-rig it to come out that way. Listen for God. Here's one of somebody I follow. This guy was a pastor of a really huge church, and then he messed up big time, really big time. Had an affair, it was a mess lost his church, lost a lot of reputation, but he's so focused on grace. I, I follow uh, Tilly, and he said, the focus of religion is on the things I need to do to make things right between God and me. The focus of Christianity is on the things God has done to make things right between God and me. If you follow some people who will give you ideas and insights and pray some of those posts, that God will send those to you. And if you're not following anybody that gives you anything that's uplifting and helpful and it's only destructive, you really need to do some examination of, of what your priorities are and what your choices are. Another option is pray a list. Pray a list. Keep a list of the needs you have. Write them down. What are the, those things? And, and talk to the Lord about those things. What about the people in your life that are important to you? And pray for those people. What about a list of the hurts and the disappointments or the, or the resentments you're dealing with? Make a list and pray through that list. Making a list can be a wonderful way to help structure prayer and help us to hear from God. I'll tell you one of the things that I have done for years and years and years is I will make a list of anxieties. When I get overwhelmed, when there's too much going on, when there's a lot of stuff happening and I'm not sure how it's all going to come out, I will take a list and I'll write that down. I'm worried about this and I'm worried about this and I'm worried about this. And I pray over that list and then I put it away. Now, I put it in my Bible just because I know eventually I'll get to it again. And I put it in my Bible for two or three or four months. And every time my entire life, for a lot of years, every time I've done that, I come back to that list two or three months later, and God has taken care of every single item on the list. If you will learn to trust God and pray and commit those kinds of things to him, it's amazing what he will do in his life. So pray a list is a good option. Uh, pray aloud. Pray out loud. Um, you know, I like to fish. And when I fish, I go down the coast, I got a little boat down there, and it's not very big, and so I just stay in the intercoastal waterway. But I like to go out to some places where nobody else is. And I don't go there because there are more fish there. If I go where their boats are, I'd probably catch more fish, but I'm really not going for the fish. I like to go because I like to be alone. And when I'm alone, I pray out loud. And some of my most important prayer times of my life are out loud, on my boat, where nobody can hear me. And I can just talk to God. And I can say out loud anything I want to say to God. And there have been times I've almost screamed at God on my boat by myself. Because when you talk to God out loud, there's something that you hear back from him that you don't when you do it subconsciously. 
Some of the best prayer times I've had have been there praying out loud. Now, for some other people, it may be praying silently, just to sit and wait and not pray anything out loud, just, just quiet before the Lord. Now, your mind will probably wander, and that's okay. Let your mind wander, but God will use that time to speak to you, and you speak to him. Find the way that fits for you. Another option is to pray thanks. You know, so often we say, God, I need this, I need this, I need this, and I need this, and I'm really hurting on this and this and this, and, and amen, and I'm off uh, to the next thing. And that's our prayer. And that's okay at times, but sometimes it's good just to pray thanks. So I'm going to take a time, I'm going to take a few minutes, three minutes, and just thank God for stuff. I'm just going to thank God for stuff. I want to thank God that, Dwight, that Daniel was here today when Doug couldn't be here and, and his spirit of music. And I'm going to thank God for Will and, and boy, incredible insights. I'm going to thank God that, that you're here today and, and you, you're distracted. There's a lot of things going on in your life, but you're here today and pray. I started praying early this morning that God would somehow speak to you. I want to thank God that Frank's got this relationship with, with Will and other people that they can have it. A, a, a kind of connection in their spiritual life that inspires me. I'm just going to thank God for some stuff. And if you will take times to thank God, not just ask for stuff, not just complain about stuff, and those things are fine, but just thank Him. It'll do things for your prayer life. Another idea is to pray together. Pray together. Um, when you pray with other people, sometimes they can help articulate what you can't say. Sometimes their prayers will give you a connection of a perspective of a relationship with God you can't have. Last night I did a, uh, I did a webinar in Australia. And uh, it was at 6 o'clock last night, our time. I think it was early morning, their time. And the leader of the webinar uh, from Perth, he wanted to pray for me before we got started. And just to hear him pray from a different culture and a different perspective, it really inspired and helped me as he prayed for our time together. Pray with other people. It can be really helpful. Now, some of you are comfortable with that, and some of you are not comfortable with that at all. And if you're not comfortable with that, then that is perfectly fine. I picked this picture on purpose for this slide because you see these people sitting together holding hands. I'll tell you, if you put me in a prayer group and ask me to hold hands, I'm out. I am out the door. I will find an excuse. My phone will ring and I'll be gone because I don't do that. It just doesn't work for me. Don't come and put your arms around me like that and expect to pray for me. I'll just be focused on how quickly can this be over. Please, dear Lord, that's the only prayer I'm having is please get this over with in a hurry because I can't stand this. So, if that's comfortable for you, some of you love that, and that's great, and some of you hate that, and that's fine. It's not about the process and the style. It's about what works for you. When you are praying with people, you know, often we can say, well, we're going to pray around the circle. Well, you just put panic into four people's lives who are around the circle who do not want to pray out loud. So ask everybody ahead of time. If you want to pray, great. If you don't want to pray, give them permission to not pray. And one thing that I often do when I'm in a group where we're going to pray together is I say, let's start with one sentence prayers. No longer. One sentence. Really insightful and helpful to be praying what that one thought is into your heart and mind. And you can learn and grow from that. So there are different ways to do it. But do it in a way that's comfortable for you and don't force your way on other people. That's not a way that's going to build them up. Another way to, to pray is to pray emotions. Pray emotions. Sometimes it's just hard to articulate everything into words, isn't it? You got this stuff going on, anxiety, depression, uh, not clinical depression, that's a whole different thing that needs help and, and really important to get that help. But, but just kind of an overwhelming feeling. Sometimes joy, sometimes disappointment. So God gave us emotions. Emotions aren't, that's, that's life and that's spirit. That's not spiritual and these other things are spiritual. No, God gave us emotions. So if God gave us emotions, use those emotions to pray them. And pray, just bring, bring your frustration before the Lord. Bring your anger. Bring your joy. Bring your fear. And you won't probably be able to put it into words, but just put it at the feet of Jesus. 
And it's amazing how God will speak into your life when you're raw with your emotions before him. Pray a letter. Some can communicate better in writing. And it can be really helpful. Part of the reason we push so hard to teach you writing is because writing makes you think. Writing makes you get perspective. Writing get, helps you to take complex ideas and to, and to organize them in a way that it starts to make sense. Writing can be really helpful. And you can just write to God. Just take a letter and just write a letter to God when it's hard to say it, and to work that through, and to cross stuff out, and add stuff in, and to write it out, and typos don't count, and, um, and you can just be transparent before God, but writing can be a really helpful way to pray for God to speak to you, and then the last one I'd suggest to you is pray now, pray now, and what I mean by that is pray immediately, don't wait to pray, you can pray when you're walking out of here today, you can pray right now, obviously, you can pray as you're headed to practice or you're headed to rehearsal. You can pray as you're headed to class or coming out of class. Pray now. If you stop me on the sidewalk at, at, on campus and you say, you know, I'm really having this trouble problem and you tell me about it and you say to me, would you pray for me? I will pray for you. I guarantee I will pray for you, but I'll probably pray for you while I'm walking away from you because I'm going to do it right then. If you send me an email and say, would you please pray for me because I got this problem, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to pray for that, e pray for you before I even put that email in a folder. I'm going to do it right then, and that's a pattern that's been helpful to me is to learn to pray as things come up, not wait till my list is full. And I think so often we think uh, our prayer life should be kind of like a meeting. I can't go to the Lord until I got a full agenda, and then I'll talk to him about everything at once because I only got his attention for a few minutes. That's not how it works. Just talk to God. He's your friend. Talk to him all the time. You don't have to schedule an appointment with God. Well, those are 11 practical ways to pray. Try them. Experiment with them. Try one. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, it, try something else. There are lots of other ways to pray. The key is to start, get going, do something that builds prayer in your life because every time we pray, every time we pray, it deepens our dependency on God and we know him better than we did the day before. That's why we pray. Pray with me our benediction and pray that God will use this moment to deepen prayer in your life. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. God bless. Have a good day. Stay warm out there.